On this episode of the Ask Mike Ronald Show, we talk about working with a patient after a large rotator cuff tear that all of a sudden starts having a shoulder shrug sign. The Ask Mike Ronald Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Before we get to the podcast, I wanted to make sure you knew about my free online course on the introduction to performance therapy and training. If you want to learn how to get started optimizing and enhancing performance, this is the course for you. Head to MikeReynolds.com slash performance to sign up today. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. We are here answering your questions from Champion PT and Performance up in Boston. I'm here with Dave Tilly, Mike Scaduto, Dan Pope. Lenny, Lenny Macrina and Lisa Russell answering all your amazing questions. Uh, Len, you want to introduce Trevor today? And I think, you know, the crowd's pretty familiar with Trevor now, right? This is the third episode. You're, you know, I think everybody was really impressed. I saw some good tweets out there saying how amazing Trevor was yeah. doing, right? <laughs> he keeps wearing that red shirt, though. I don't know why that red shirt is. It's like a Tiger Sunday or something like that. Um, I mean, ours is a uniform. We have an excuse. It's a uniform, right? We, right? But... we have to wear this, right? <laughs> uh, so Trevor Claridge is a uh, PT student from Belmont University in Nashville, uh, Tennessee, he does not have a nickname that I'm aware of. So I think it's something that we need to ponder uh, over these next few months. I've thrown out T-Money in the clinic, T-Bone, but those are pretty basic. We, we should yeah. get more advanced with his nickname. Crystal, I feel, Crystal Claire, Trevor. Yeah. Clarice, Trevor Clarice, Claridge. Clarice is thing? like a Hannibal Lecter. Like yeah. Exactly, there. right. <laughs> what, what, are they, what, what does he put in the basket? The lotion? lotion lotion in the skin <laughs> put, put, the, put the lotion in the basket it's gonna be trevor lotion claridge <laughs> he's got creepy he's got very creepy vibes this is, i think we just we just we just broke some ground right there that might be the first nickname like like giving out out live. on an episode live. live that was that was amazing that's how that's how we do it that's about how it happens <laughs> strongly reconsidered and then I think the real key is we ask Trevor what he thinks. And if he's on yeah. board, we try to find another one. We so I, think it, that's, right. I think that's the key. But Trevor, what, what do we got for a question today? So Lynn Meredith from Ohio. After an open repair of complete tear, supraspinatus, and subscap, my patient progressed phenomenal, phenomenally with passive range of motion, zero pain, eventually working isometrics and active flexion with minimal hiking at 10 reps. Now at three and a half months out, she cannot hold her arm at 90 degrees abduction for seconds even without hiking. What gives? Still just a weak cuff. She mentions times she thinks she lifted something too heavy or did too much, vacuuming with too much pain after, but was motivated based on her prior lack of symptoms. Man, okay, all right. So let me let me summarize that real quick, Lynn Meredith. So super spinous subscap tear, that stinks. I wonder, I wonder if there's like a dislocation involved with that and I don't know, but anywho, uh, that's things. Um, and doing great for, you know, three and a half months. And then all of a sudden can't hold her arm up without a shrug. So right, right. let's start off with like this. Is anybody, is anybody panicked she retore her cuff yet? Is it definitive she retore his cuff or are we, what do we think? Anyone want to start with that? I'm not panicked, but I'm, I'm questioning. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a, a little <laughs> nervous at this point. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I imagine she's been back to the doctor. She's 14 weeks out of surgery. So you could be curious what the doctor says, but um, if we were progressing well, I mean, this is sounds like a big old tear, right? It was an open repair. It's, I think if I recall and two tendon involvement. So <clears throat> the chance of this re-tearing and I, we don't know her medical history, uh, but the chance of retearing is pretty good. Yeah, um, that's a good point. Un- like over 50%. Unfortunately, right? I would say so. Yeah. That's so is it early? Yes. Uh, would a surgeon do surgery now? No. But, you know, it's one of those like, why was she progressing so well and didn't have a shrug? And now she's got a shrug and she recalls an event um, that may have irritated things. And it could be that she's just irritated everything and, and now it's, it needs time to calm down. But, um, with the history of the open repair, which is unusual to do an open nowadays, I feel like if, if it was open, that means that there was something, a bad injury occurred, um, and they need to really visualize the tissue. Um, but she should have scarred down nicely 
and um, and with the open repair and gotten a good repair from that. So I'm, I'm a little concerned uh, with this current presentation. I, I'm concerned she had zero pain and was feeling great after an open repair too. I mean, those are pretty right. not pain-free-ish, right? And so- Right. Um, inter- you know, interesting right there. So, all right. So I like that. A couple things. I mean, two tears, probably, there's probably some other factors that are going here. Those are probably big tears open, all these things. She probably has what, at least a 50% chance that of re-tearing this? I'd say so. Yeah. Somewhere around there. But, so, so without knowing her age and history and, you know, prior level function and, and all that stuff, but if she's got yeah. any kind of medical history and she's like in her sixties or seventies, like there's a good chance. Yeah. And this is, <laughs> this is usually where, this is usually where they do tear by the way. Uh, Lynn Mary. So they don't, it's not that they tear like nine months down the road because, you know, it doesn't work at the end range. They tear now. Right. So I, I do think, you know, if you look at the literature, most people tear, you know, more in the beginning of, uh, of this process process than the later portions of this process. So I think that's, that's pretty realistic too. Um, her, pro- her problem was she did so well early on, she felt too good yeah. and, uh, and, yeah. and probably did too much. You know, it's one of those ones where you want them to sky down and get tight and pain a little, you know, you don't want to live through that too much, but like it, it slows things down. It lets you, it lets you kind of, you know, pump the brakes a little bit. It sounds like she was doing too well. So good job, Lynn, that you got her motion back and all that, but uh oh. Yeah. So you know, you know, not. you know what I'm thinking. Here's the first thing that that popped in my mind. I don't know if this is good or bad, Lynn, to be honest with you. Um, but like, w- w- I've treated a lot of people with massive rotator cuff tears and repairs, so non-operative tears and repairs that have done quite well with a super spin. It's just essentially non-existent, right? And they can do okay, right? We kind of talk about the suspension bridge concept with the rotator cuff, where you know, just like the pillars of a suspension bridge, but if your anterior and posterior cuff are doing a really good job, even without a super spin, it's you still can elevate your arm without a hike a lot of times if you get those really pristine the big problem here lynn marath is her subscap <laughs> so her subscap was a part of that and if she had her subscap there this had to be it, it might it, I, I i'm just imagining this as some sort of trauma you know to be able to do a big subscap tear too but maybe not but um now her anterior portion of her suspension bridge isn't working well either and and that's a problem so i so i don't know the answer if it's retorn i don't know if it was super spinach or subscap that retorn but they could both present this way and i wouldn't be surprised if it's subscap too because that i mean anything going into external rotation is going to put stress on the sub gap and man that's challenging right it's a little bit easier when it's super infra because we kind of avoid going in which i think is a little easier especially like pillow braces and stuff but going out with functional life that's pretty hard you know and and i'm just i'm just kind of thinking about that so does anybody let's take a huge step back because i think if we look at the literature again it doesn't matter if your um it doesn't matter if it your tear is is retorn again right Um, your subjective and functional outcomes could still be really good afterwards if you get them really strong. So does anybody necessarily care right now? Would would it change what you do if it's torn or not torn? Or do we just more work on the functional deficit of her having a hike? What do you guys think? What do you think, Dan? Well, I guess two things. Like you said, if if you start looking at some of the research, and obviously there's there's a lot out there and it's a little bit mixed, but when they see the people that re-tear like a year later, usually their function is almost exactly the same, except for maybe strength, right? There's very few things that are different between the groups. Um, My only problem with that is that if you have a younger person with, let's say, retracted tears, we know that over the course of time, that's going to progress faster. So if you're lacking cuff tendons, despite feeling pretty good, let's say at the year mark, what does five years from now look like? What does 10 years from now look like? So in a lot of folks, I mean, we just had a person the other day with, you know, three tendon tears, right? Massive tears, two of them retracted, and he has minimal pain, full range of motion, good strength, but he's getting the surgery because he's 42 years old and there's a good chance that's gonna continue getting worse. He doesn't wanna be in a position where he has to get a reverse total shoulder eventually, right? So I would say, yeah, good. And if a year later, they're feeling great, but the other part's like, if you got that surgery for long-term health, you're probably in a little bit of a, a tough position now. Yeah. I would say too, I've seen people at this point, Lynn Meredith, where you got a little bit of a hump right here. Maybe she started doing too much. Maybe she flared it up. Maybe she didn't necessarily re-tear it. You get through the hump. You really work on strength down below, right? Really work on some good like dynamic stability down below. And then all of a sudden, like she will get a little bit better and she'll be able to elevate <laughs> again. Uh, this could just be a hump. 
if this is prolonged, right. And you're, it's like a month now and she's still hiking the whole time. I think, you know, sending back to the physician probably is the, is the right step to just see what we have going on on the inside. Um, you know, and, and nowadays too, I mean, they can, you know, diagnostic ultrasound to check that out too. It's not like super invasive to look at it. So, um, so I guess in summary, Lynn Marath, I mean, um, even if it is torn, it's not necessarily the end of the world and it's not necessarily a bad uh, indicator of a future prognosis, I guess. So we would do the same thing anyway, is just work on strength below 90 degrees. So that way her anterior posterior cuff are maximized as much as they can. And she can elevate without that hike eventually over time. Um, it just might take longer, right? Does that make sense? So yeah. I just want to say something real quick because I think I just come off as an alarmist, you know. Um, but I have a patient <laughs> right now who's 50-something, uh, cuff repair, wasn't massive, and she hit the same thing. Just had a lot of pain in the uh, the middle of a rehab, got super concerned, sent her back to the physician. Physician's like, you're doing fine, not a big deal, and she's getting better and better, and it's not an issue. So um, that's generally what happens. But I think the other part is that as physical therapists, we have to just be conscious of what may happen in the long term, you know, like make the best stuff. decision. I yeah. like that. I feel like we can we can create another podcast. I feel like that'd be a good title for a podcast is like the alarmist physical therapy podcast, yeah. <laughs> right? Like what not what not to say? No, uh, no. I I I I think you know your point of view, Dan, was was really good on your your other person there. Is that it's it's about your long term function and not necessarily the status of your your cuff tendon sometimes. So you know just focus on the function, right? Focus on that hike and getting that as well as you can. And if you're still having problems, then this may be one of those big enough tears that she's going to have trouble if it's not if it's not fixed if it does re-tear again does that make sense so but man these get harder to, to repair as you you know as you have to revise so um awesome good luck lynn meredith i uh, appreciate the question if you have a question like that please head to micron.com click on the podcast link and head to spotify itunes or whatever it's called nowadays and subscribe rate and review and we'll see you in the next episode thank you